Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, it's uh, like April 28th or something like that, 2021. And well, finally, the wind calmed down a little bit, so I got a few things done today. But uh, this morning it was calm, and as soon as I decided to go outside, it picked up, it was 17, 19 miles per hour. Too much, had to go back in. Oh, couldn't get anything done early, so I started late. So, I got the wrappings on my two pipes, and I've got it all backfilled and leveled over. And I will be building a box to hide those, so that uh, don't have to worry about uh, birds and critters eating up the insulation for uh, making nests with it and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably put a box on there and pour a little concrete in the bottom of the box so that if something tunnels under, it can't go up and live in the box. So, got that part done. Then uh, I've been putting off and putting off and putting off all winter uh, I didn't clean my double deuce exercise equipment. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, the double deuce exercise equipment. So I got it all cleaned today. It's completely clean. I took it all apart, put all the uh, inner mechanisms in my um, subsonic. Uh, vibrator cleaner with uh, the liquid that eats up um, gunpowder and all that stuff it's a water-based liquid and uh, ran those for about 25 minutes and got them out and used a toothbrush to clean the excess uh, cooked on baked on uh, powder that was on them and then Finally oiled everything and wiped it down and reassembled it and come back out here and I uh, Took some shots at the uh, exercise area using the old hubcap in the center so They were they were off a little bit because I had removed the scope and when I put the scope back on it was uh, about two and a half inches high and an inch to the right is where it was hitting. So I zeroed it in and then for the final shot I aimed right at one of the lug nuts at about uh, 11 o'clock on the thing and blew it right off of there. So it's zeroed. These idiots next door have been playing loud uh, Mexican salsa music all day yesterday and all day today. Irritating. They're not only stupid, they're deaf. So anyway, I got that done. And uh, let's see, what else did I do? Well, I feed, filled the, uh, the bird feeder and they've already emptied half of it off. So... That was done. Oh, yeah. Then I came in here, and uh, some of these power tools have been sitting for a long time without being used. So I cleaned them and lubed them. So this one has still got to be worked on. It's still a little on the stiff side. But I did get the... Uh, the milling machine and the lathe uh, running in good order. Let's see if it kicks on here. Yeah, there it goes. So, that one works. That one still needs a little more work. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Got some oil leaking out of it. But yeah, this is the... Uh, the milling machine these uh, these are the bits that go in it and uh, this head when you're working on a lathe 
you can loosen this up here and then swing the head out of the way so that you've got a clear spot to work on a lathe. So, pretty, uh, pretty nice little tool. I bought this from Harbor Freight a long time ago. And there's a certain area that you gotta find where this thing fits right in the middle and then it won't rock. There it goes. So, it came with uh, with this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. But I didn't have anything for doing large face areas. So what I did was, I took a giant bolt, and then I put it in the lathe, and I, I ground it down so that it was the right diameter to fit in the holder. And then I did set it the other way and I got the miller milling machine going and I cut a slope in it and then ran a groove cut right through the center so I could put this bit in there. So now this goes in the milling machine and it spins like that so it takes a wide sweeping cut so I can put a, a face across a wide piece of metal in just a couple of passes. It's better than you know, just trying to, with this little thing, you have a hundred passes to go across the four inch piece for crying out loud. So uh, <clears throat> that's another little tool I made. And I got everything all cleaned and lubed and took the uh, um, chip brush and cleaned all of the little filings and stuff from stuff that I've been doing. This is another thing I came up with. I can use two different size cutters and set them in on different angles and then I can crack this loose and rotate this and use one or the other and I'm going to do another third one coming off of here which would be a, a longer unit so that I can use it to, to turn this way move this thing inward and then cut the inside of something with it ah, just a uh, Neat little stuff to have around. I've got two of these uh, band saws. I got that one and this one. And people say, "Why do you have two? Well, I keep this one set up for ninety degree cuts, and I keep that one set up for forty five degree cuts. So I don't have to keep changing the settings on one and then rechecking it and all of that. All right. So I got all of that done. And then I started working on. Uh, this is going to be a small rock crusher that I'll be using for uh, when I go out uh, gold prospecting. I bring back some quartz and I want to break it open and get the good stuff out of it. So I'm going to weld this onto a steel plate. I don't know if I'll use this one or not. I, I want something that's got a little bit more base area on it. And um, I'll weld that on and then this piece can screw into it. And then this piece, uh, that's the uh, hammer part. And this actually fits down inside this tube. Okay. So when it's screwed into this piece, that's the depth that it will go down to the when it's at the bottom. So when I put a rock in there, I can determine how, how much it's cracked without having to un take it all apart and look at it every five minutes just by how far down it goes. Uh, a lot of times what you got to do is crush those rocks up and into almost a powder form and then you pour all of that into your sluice box or your uh, gold pan and you work it out there and get all of the pretty yellow gold stuff out of it. So that's uh, another project that I'm working on. But I was glad to get all these um, machines up and running because I've had a couple of items that I needed to work with. And when I went over there and uh, tried to turn those uh, machines on, they just, uh, just sit there humming. They, they didn't want to turn. So all of the um, grease on the bearings and stuff had uh, coagulated from sitting here for two or three years and not being used. So I got out my um, 
degrease their stuff and degreased everything and then relubed it all. All right, everybody. Uh, the other thing I did was I went down and cleaned and fed the chickens. And then I went into the garden house and the greenhouse and uh, checked the watering on everything and uh, got everything all watered well. So now it's time for the after hours happy hour. So I'm going to go get happy. Thanks for joining me, everybody. G Bear reminding you don't forget to thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, please. We're on our way. We're um, uh, j just, uh, just under 200 uh, more subscribers, and I'll be at that 5,000 mark. And we're going to have something really special going on for that 5,000 mark. So for the last 100 people, I'm going to do, run a little contest and have a giveaway. I know you guys like those contests with the giveaways. And uh, I'll be announcing that pretty soon. So stay tuned. Don't forget to watch G-Bears Off-Grid Ways. This is G-Bear signing off.